always, if you haven't tried the question yet on your own, please pause the video and do so before moving on. For part A, in order to find the resultant of these two forces, what we need to do is draw a free body diagram for the car. The black dot in the center of the y and x axis would represent the car, and we've drawn the forces exactly as they were indicated in the diagram. In order to find the resultant of these two forces, what we need to do is to break them up into their y and x components. So for example, consider the 400 newton force first. We can go ahead and draw a y component that projects upward and an x component that projects to the right. When we draw those components, we can see that we have a right triangle. The x component would represent the opposite side of the 30 degree angle, and the y component would represent the adjacent side of the 30 degree angle. And for that reason, we can label the x component as 400 sine of 30 degrees, and the y component 400 cosine of 30 degrees. In fact, after we have drawn the x and the y components of the 400 newton force, we can erase that force from the diagram and just leave behind its components. We can find the y and x components for the 450 newton force in a similar manner. The x component being 450 sine of 10 and the y component being 450 cosine of 10. After we have the components of the 450 newton force, we can erase the 450 newton force and leave behind just its components. Now that the forces are broken up into their components, we can move on to finding the resultant of the forces. And one way to do that is to organize the information in a table that looks like the following. For force 1, all we have to do is plug in the x and the y components that we found earlier. We will do the same for F2. Notice, however, that the x component of the second force is pointing in the leftward direction. That means that the sign of that force will be negative. We have to include that in the table for the x component. The y component is pointing upward and will therefore be positive. After filling in the components into the table, we can find the x and the y components of the resultant by simply adding the x components vertically in the table to get a resultant x component, and then do the same thing for the y components. The x component of the resultant would therefore be approximately 121.9 newtons, and the y component turns out to be about 789.6 newtons. Once we have the x and the y component of the resultant, it's a good idea to plot them on a new graph, so let's take a look at that. Now because the resultant x component was positive 121.9, what we can do from the origin is just go out along the positive x-axis and draw in a vector that points in the positive x direction. From the tip of that arrow, we will draw the y component, which was positive 789.6. Because it's positive, it's going to go straight up. Now the resultant force will simply be a line drawn from the origin to the tip of that second arrow. And because we've constructed a right triangle, we can now use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. So here we have the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. When you solve for the resultant r, you should obtain approximately 799 newtons, and that will represent the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the car. If we'd like, we can also find the angle that the resultant force is acting at the x-axis. Within this triangle, we have a side opposite to the angle and also a side adjacent to that angle. Now, opposite and adjacent call to mind tangent because the tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite and adjacent sides. Let's fill in the opposite and adjacent sides of our right triangle. Now, to actually solve for theta, we must take what is called the inverse tangent of both sides, so it looks something like this. And if you plug that expression into your calculator, you should get approximately 81 degrees for the angle. So, in summary, the resultant force is 799 newtons acting at an 81 degree angle above the x-axis. Now along to part B, which asks us to calculate the acceleration of the car, which will be relatively straightforward because acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. We just determined the value of the net force, and we know the mass of the car because it's stated in the question, so let's fill those in. And after we compute that on our calculator, we should get an acceleration of approximately 0.266 meters per second squared. The direction of the acceleration will be the same as the angle that we had found earlier, so we could say that the angle for the acceleration is also 81 degrees above the positive x-axis, and that would be the correct value for the acceleration of the car. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can also send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.